Okay, I'm going to talk to you about a debugger. And uh, my opinion is everyone should use a debugger. And if you're not using a debugger, it's because you haven't found the right one yet. So before I show you a debugger, I have to show you a bug. So here's a bug. It's a real one. It's a bug in Mercurial. It's about something called phases. So Mercurial has this thing called phases. And I'll show you what it is in a moment. So here's a Mercurial repo. Can everyone read that? Yeah. Big enough? Big enough. In the OK. Uh, so here's a Mercurial repo. And there are some commits lying around. Um, now the phases command, what it does is it tells you, uh, it just tells you if, if, if your commit has been published or not, or if it's secret. Right now I'm in a public commit, and this bug is about the return code of this command. Here I'm going to add a little echo so you can see the return code. Here you can see the return code, it's, uh, it's just zero, which is fine. Now the bug report is that if you try to change the, the phase to something that you're not supposed to be able to change it without uh, without a force, like a dash dash force. Um, it gives you a return code of one. This is fine because you're trying to do something that you you're not supposed to normally do. But if you try to change it into what it already is, uh, it is a draft. Then you're you're still getting an error code of one. So it's a very simple bug. You're, you're getting the wrong error code because this, sh this shouldn't happen. If you're trying to change it, but it's already what it is, you shouldn't be getting a, a, uh, an error from that. Now, in order to handle bugs, Mercurial has a debugger command. So we can run the same command inside a debug debugger. And by default, this opens PDB. And if PDB is the only debugger you've ever seen, I won't blame you for not using a debugger. <laughs> <laughs> because it's, it's, I mean, it's a debugger, but it's kind of crappy. I mean, you, you can do up to m move up the call stack. You can do L to look at the source code. Here we're looking at the Mercurial source code. It looks really ugly because the debugger is ugly. Not, be not because the source code is ugly. So here I can do C to continue, and it'll continue executing the code, and it'll go back to my bug again, which is no faces change, and I'm getting a, an error code of one. So Mercurial has a command to pick a different debugger, and I'm going to pick this one. Uh, config UI debugger equals, I'm going to pronounce this PUD B, but I don't know how it's pronounced. I guess it's PU, like it stinks, DB, I don't know. But it doesn't stink, it's great. Um, and this opens this. It opens this beautiful, uh, colorful thing. It even has a welcome screen. Uh, we're not going to read that right now. But the first thing it does is ask you to configure it. We are going to configure it. I'm going to tell it to show me the line numbers. I'm going to tell me to tell it to use Python, IPython. And I like dark themes, so I'm going to make it dark. OK. So here we are in actual debugger. If you ever used uh, an IDE, you might have seen something like this. This is why I call it the debugger without an IDE, because it's just all command line. Well. Um, text-based. Up here you can see the, the variables, here you have your call stack, here you have your code. It's all wonderful and colorful. So let's look at our bug. I happen to know the Mercurial source code pretty well, so I know that the bug is somewhere in the command module. So I'm going to pick a module to look at. I'm going to look at the Mercurial commands module. And within the Mercurial commands module, I'm, I'm going to search for a function. I'm going to search for the phases. So here we are. And here I, I can move down. I'm just moving. I'm just. Uh, this is just. Um, I'm just looking around. I'm not doing actually and executing anything. And I'm going to set a breakpoint there by pressing B. It looks all, all red now because there's a breakpoint now. And I can press C to continue execution to that point. And here I am. Uh, I'm actually running my code now. I'm actually running the Mercurial code. And you can, as usual, press N to move around. And um, I don't know. It, the first time I saw a debugger, I was pretty amazed by it. So let's look, let's look a bit around more here. And now I'm going to look down. And this is all just handling a lot of the complicated logic of phases. But here we get to interesting part. Ah, here we get the return code is 1. If rejected, that looks all right. But if there were changes, there were no changes. So we should be getting here. So I'm going to press T for until. And execution should continue to that point. It does. Cool. And um, one of the nice things is that you remember how in the beginning I told you to use I I Python? At any moment, you can press the exclamation mark. And it actually opens an IPython shell in which you can analyze your variables like any uh, other time. Um, here, for example, I can see that the return code at this point is zero, but that line is turning into, into one. 
So I'm going to just press C to continue. It, conti it kept executing my code, and it, and it gave me the bad return code that I don't want. So let's actually go and fix the code. Here's a code. This is an Emacs. It's not my debugger anymore. But I can just go here. I'm going to delete this line here. Let's go back to my debugger. I'm going to run it again. Now, the, one of the cool things is that you saw that I exited the debugger and came back in. This debugger actually remembers your, your breakpoints. So if I press C again, it's going to ex execute up until it gets to that breakpoint. I can go back to that, that place before where I had my error. It's here. The line's been deleted. I can continue on the way there. I can again verify here that the return code is 0, as it should be. And I can continue. And now my return code is 0. So using a very simple debugger, the bug's been fixed.